speaker, Reverend Sonia Davidson, someone who I admire so much, to bring you the word of encouragement. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome again for my part to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. And uh, I'm so blessed to have beloved Carol with me this morning. And most of all, I feel blessed to all you congregants who come out every week, because you are the collective inspiration that makes this church continue to be so special. My talk this morning, yes, is the only answer, the art and science of waiting. A well-known politician once said, in chastising his impatient constituents, manga don't drop till it's ripe. Have any of you experienced, I'm sure you have, I know in growing up as a child, I would have the experience of passing these very huge, tall mango trees filled with mangoes, but all the green ones seem to be in reach, and a few mature-looking ones seem to always be at the top of the tree, I guess, facing the sun. Days would pass, and I would pass by, and I would look up and wait. I had no choice because I couldn't climb the tree, and I was not allowed to use a long stick to get them down. Eventually, right, we certainly were not allowed to throw stones, not where I was from anyway. So we'd wait and wait until one day you'd see the gleaming yellow fruit lying on the grass if somebody didn't get there before you. Now when my fruits drop, my, my dogs get there before me, so I have to run. But uh, this was in the days when dogs did not eat mangoes. <laughs> you know, I have experienced two um, contrasting feelings this week. One is a sense of true pride that a project that I've been working on for about 17, 17 years has now reached fruition in that the Master of Science in Complementary Alternative Medicine, which I have been speaking about here repeatedly, they, they will have our first graduates from the University of Technology. We had to wait 17 years for it of consistent work and focus and knowing. But there's another newer project that I have that made me question the timing, whether it was going as fast as I would want it to. And up came a beautiful, beautiful video, which some of you may have seen, which inspired me so much, and I will share with you in a little while. But I used some of these inspirations from the Bible. There's so much on it about waiting. And one particular one from Psalm 27, New King's Dame version said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And there's a A.W. Tozer, I've never heard of him before, but I liked what he said. He says, teach us, O Lord, the discipline of patience, for to wait is often harder than work. That's an opinion. And when we think about it, you know, he may have very well have a point for those who are not living from within. People sometimes accept the idea that a change of thought and prayer will transform their lives into harmony and freedom. The logic of the principle appeals to them, and they set to work upon it in earnest. Then after a short while, they say, it's not working. Nothing has happened, and they may even drop back into the old way of thinking. Bishop T.D. Jakes reminds us, timing is important. If you are going to be successful in dance, 
You must respond to rhythm and timing. It is the same with spirit. Anyone who has ever watched a cricket match would know how important timing is to both the bowler and the batsman. In fact, being out of time could be quite dangerous to the batsman. Waiting for change takes perseverance. If you want to die for a week, surely you would not expect to transform the effects of years of poor eating in a few days. The habit that caused the condition must first be changed to get the corresponding desired result. Likewise, the habit of thinking must change if we want something different in our lives. There are two new thought ideas which require deeper thought to appreciate their real significance. One is when you pray, shuffle your feet. So it is easy to take this to mean that having prayed the next sec second, you must hurry yourself to try to make things happen. The other is when you pray, the answer is inst instantaneous. Now let us take the first one. When you pray, shuffle your feet, does not necessarily, does not mean that we should go out and try to manipulate conditions or force things to happen. If we have prayed and prayed aright, there is some impulse in us that will make us do the right thing at the right time, attract the right persons at the right time to be partner with us and all of the conditions necessary. The time we spend on our inner world is valuable time because it is that which assures us that no matter how long, if you have to wait 17, 18 years like I did, it must come to pass. The other is yes, when we pray, the prayer is instantaneous because we have, prayer is like planting a seed and a seed is whole and complete. It doesn't grow in parts and within a seed is everything necessary for the expression of the plant. In the same way, when we pray, within that prayer is everything necessary for the complete expression of whatever we pray for. So how do I know that my waiting is not in vain? Some, so I'm, I'm sharing some thoughts of some very famous historical figures. Some of them were a little bit cynical. And one of them, Woodrow Winston, said, all things come to those who wait, provided he knows what he's waiting for. Makes sense, right? Then Abraham Lincoln says, things may come to those who wait, but things left by those who hustle. Mm, not very sense of man. <laughs> he that, then Benjamin Franklin says, he that can have patience can have what he will. He that can have patience can have what he will. Emmett Fox, in his book of daily readings, reminded us that sometimes a full demonstration does not come in one move, but more likely, he says, in a series of stages. And he says, when this, this series unfold, it is important not to despise the little by little demonstrations, because when we do that, we are actually keeping our demonstrations back. Neither should he say, neither did he say, should we accept that the small improvements is all that we can get. We know where we are going, but we give thanks for what we have and what we see experiencing in our lives. The story that came to me, and I encourage you all to see it, to hear it, it comes home to you very, very strongly. It's about the story of a young man called Kyle. This young man migrated to, Jam to Canada from Jamaica. He played some put football here before he went. So it is natural for him to think that he was a football player. When he went to university there, he wanted to continue his football career. So he went to the coach of the university, I think it's Ryerson University, and of, this is the coach of the football team, and he asked the coach if he could 
try out for the team. He did. The coach who narrates this, this YouTube video said, Kyle played horribly. That's the word he used. Kyle, so there was no chance of him making the team. Kyle went home, but he said to himself, my mother told me that whatever I want, I should make a vision board and I should continue to see it as happening. So he did just that, apparently. Kyle came back the next season and he was marginally better. But he couldn't make the coach, the, the team. Wasn't good enough. Next season, Kyle turned up again, same thing. Maybe a little better, but the coach didn't think he was good enough. So he said, all right, guess what? Train with us. You can train with us because he was so persistent and adorable. He said, well, why don't you just train with us? And uh, hoping that that would quench him, he would see, you know, what, that he wasn't ready. And Kyle played. Next season, look at this, four times, the team did very badly and they were missing some players, so they wanted to have some help. So they requested help that, that some people be sent to them to, so that they could um, try out. And guess who turned up again? Kyle, right? This time they had 150 people and they went down to 100 and gradually they eliminated until four was left. And guess who was in the four? Kyle. Hmm. So the coaches realized now why right, they had only one place on the team and there was Kyle waiting, expecting to be one of them. But I didn't have the heart to say to him right there and then. So what they said is, okay, I will call and tell the person who is selected that, you know, um, they are selected. So the coach, did, the coach did that. He got the number of the person who was selected, which was not Kyle. And he called Kyle. He called the person. Only to hear who answered the phone, Kyle. So trouble, what is he going to do now, right? So he had to tell the truth. But anyway, he told Kyle to come along and not to be part of the team, but to sit on the bench and be, you see, he's upgrading gradually. <laughs> so Kyle came, sat on the beach, on the, t on the bench. And then what happened? Somebody had to drop out. And who did they have? Only Kyle. There was only Kyle on the bench. So Kyle played. And the coach said, that Kyle played just absolutely wonderful. He said his style was a little rough, but he put his whole heart and mind in it. And guess what? He was the most valuable player that, on that particular day. So guess what? The coach had no, he just had to keep him on the team. He had to keep him on the team. He praised Kyle in that video for his courage, his determination, his tenacity, now his skill, imagine his skill, and most of all, his leadership, and his willingness when he's on the football field to plunge into any situation, however difficult it may be. And Kyle's message to us, Kyle Stewart, the Orin, Carol's, Carol's son, right? Carol Orange's son, a member of our church, a member of our Sunday school, is creating waves now as a member of a major team. I couldn't get the name of the team, but it's a major team. Inspiring not only his coach, so that he could actually make that, right? And what did Kyle say? Believe in yourself, because if you don't, who will? Isn't that wonderful? If you don't, who will? I brought this up because it's not only showed perseverance, but he ne I never got the impression at any time that he ever showed any what we call bad face in Jamaica. He just continued 
and persisted. And that is part of the art of waiting. It is part of the art of waiting. Corinthian said, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Kyle has lifted himself to a higher place of being by that persistence. He is now permanently in a state of higher understanding of himself because he refused to see and accept anything but yes. My soul waits silently for God alone. Psalm 131. And Peter, 2 Peter verse 3, chapter 9 says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting you to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And we know in the science of mind that repentance means repense, right? Rethink, because whatever thinking brought you into the experience you're having, you will have to change that thinking to the one that corresponds to what you want to experience. Everything held in consciousness must ultimately come to pass. There can be nothing in the soul that is not demonstrated sooner or later in the outer. There is nothing in the outer which does not first have some correspondence in the inner. So what do we do? We project our imagination to the end of our journey. While we are waiting, it is not that we are caught up in the moment of what is happening. No, we, we know we are steadfast in maintaining our goal. And the goal is the end of the journey that we would want. And in doing so, we cut through all seeming obstacles, detours, we ignore side roads and rest stops. So we picture the outcome. We return to where we are and we walk that destination over and over in our minds, feeling the joy of anticipation. And it is that joy of anticipation which is like a catalyst, which is like that which propels us forward. Emmett Fox advises us against struggling to hold on to any one thought, but will but will but use the willpower to know that the destination is at hand. Instead he said you must allow a train of relevant thoughts to have free play in your mind. Just allow it to, to flow, leading one leading naturally to the other. The thoughts must be positive, harmonious, and appertaining to our desire. And we must think it quietly without effort, without effort. Sometimes it's really difficult for us to see our way past present difficulties. We may feel stuck when we pray, we are firm and yet things seem to remain the same. We are tempted to cut and run sometimes to get away from the situation or to doubt whether our waiting will not be in vain. But we are encouraged to keep on going until we succeed by our knowledge that God is love and God is law. God's love is a giving us of the freedom to choose and the certainty that what comes to us as a result of our choosing is exactly what we need to evolve. On the other hand, God's law ensures that that which we choose is automatically fulfilled without questioning because that is the way God works. Psalm 27 says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart, that is, give you courage courage. What is the waiting attitude? Daily contemplate the presence of God as our true identity. No matter what is going on in our lives, we need to remind ourselves that beneath it and within us, God the I am, that which changes not is. The ocean does not change when it produces a wave. And the wave does not give up the attributes it derives from the ocean in the process of becoming a wave. Furthermore, a wave never departs from the presence of the ocean. It never loses its connection. It does not. It could not. The wave cannot be known as anything other than the ocean appearing 
as a wave. We too must choose to know ourselves as a point where God appears. So what do we do? We reflect on our options. Whenever we have an urge to do anything or to experience anything, we reflect on our options and then we choose. And we can affirm, I'm determined to succeed after we have chosen. Then we decide that I am resolute in my intention. We pray and affirm, I do not ever take no for an answer. Yes is the only answer. Have faith. I give up fear, which is the antithesis of faith. I give up fear. I see myself successful. You can choose any words that appeal to you, but you must spice your goals and your desires with these words. I call them statements of faith or affirmations. And our will, not willpower. Willpower implies grappling and fighting. Will is like the old time cameras where you used to focus. Use that focus and you just take your picture and you move on. And something to prime that will, I am resolute in my attention. So avoid especially comparing yourself with others who seem to be getting ahead faster. Rejoice for them because they are demonstrating what is possible. Letting go is an automatic result of having gone through all of the stages where we recognize ourselves as who we truly are connected to that power and presence, which is a source of all good. So by the time we have completed all deciding what we want and being determined to achieve it and keeping our eyes single, the release comes automatically. It's not a mechanistic thing. It's an automatic release. And it means that we have reached a stage where we can say the universe supports me. I expect to accomplish and succeed. I am resolute in my attention. I found a very um, sweet reading from Joyce Myers. And it's, it, it moves very, very smoothly into this um, reading, this line from Psalm 37, verse 7, which says, Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Joyce Maz is a, is a Reverend Joyce Maz, who is a, a media um, pastor. She says, I believe that a trusting attitude and a patient attitude go hand in hand. You see, when you let go and learn to trust God, trust the Lord, trust God, it releases joy in your life. And when you trust God, you are able to be more patient. Patience is not just about waiting for something. It is about how you wait or your attitude while waiting. Waiting on God requires that we calm our minds so that a still small voice of intuition and divine guidance may be heard above the chatter of our human limited preferences. Prayer elevates the mind above the chatter of negativity and serves to maintain our focus on the goal and the inevitability of good. If you expect good, nothing but good can come to you. My soul waits silently for God alone. Again, Emmett Fox gives some advice about prayer. He says, lest we be tempted to pray under pressure when things seem to be delayed or going wrong, he said, we must realize that the great enemy of prayer is a sense of tension. When you are tense, you're always working from outside inward. Tension in prayer is probably the greatest cause of failure to demonstrate. Remember, the mind always works inefficiently when you are tense. When you think, I must demonstrate this and I must get that in three days, you are tense. You are using willpower and you will do more harm than good. Here again, he advised, relax mentally. Draw away from the problem, that which you have defined as a problem. And the action of God will open the door for you, and you will be free. Be still and know. So 
on a daily basis, I would invite you to have a practice which allows you to continuously stay within that silence, that stillness, even when you're about your everyday activity. Thomas Nelson, in a publication, Joy for the Morning, Joy for the Journey, Morning and Evening, said, arguably one of the most difficult concepts in life for us is to grasp the art of waiting patiently. For sometimes what we learn and who we become in the process of waiting is even more important than what we are waiting on. Be still and know that somewhere something incredible is waiting to be known, says Carl Sagan. Be still and know that something incredible is waiting to be known. Feel a sense of expectancy at all times and know that that expectancy is the expectancy of good because the goodness which is God so allowed us to choose whatever we may and to know that the outcome, even if it seems to be different from what we had initially chosen, will come, the path will come in ways that is appropriate if we allow ourselves to let go and let God. Reverend Linda DeCoff gives me this affirmation. I depend on God alone and live beyond appearances, safe, secure. I harvest my good now. I depend on God alone and live beyond appearances, safe, secure. I harvest my good now. Living in the present, but knowing that whatever we desire is already so and that it unfolds in a timely and a beautiful manner in the way that a seed unfolds to become a plant, that a pupa unfolds to become a butterfly. So with me, say this affirmation, I depend on God alone. I depend on God alone and live beyond appearances and live beyond appearances safe, secure, safe, secure. I harvest my good now. I harvest my good now. Namaste.